And action! <laughs> What's up guys, Cerebro here for T3G, and we're doing uh, something fun today. We're going to do a build slash case swap. Uh, we've got our HP, what's the model here, the A6300F, that's, uh, that's actually appropriate since we're going to be upgrading to an FX6300. Um, but yeah, we're, we're basically, we're pulling a couple pieces out of here, upgrading, a friend of ours asked us to, to get him something new, he bought all the parts, I don't have that kind of money. Uh, but uh, we uh, yeah we're just gonna we're gonna bring this over and we're gonna port it to uh, this uh, setup right here. So what we've got here is our Rosewill uh, Blackhawk case. Uh, look for a review on this uh, soon. We've got our uh, 990 FXA MSI board. I'm cheating off the the sheet here just so you guys know. Uh, we've got our FX uh, 6300 uh, six core. Um, and I'll, I'll get into the whys and what wherefores in a second here. Uh, we've got our Rosewill uh, 80 plus bronze uh, green uh, PSU, so it's going to save a little energy, you know, in the long run. Um, but the main thing is the 80 plus uh, bronze or silver, meh, unless you're really doing high end stuff, it's not that big a deal. Um, we've got our MSI uh, 6450 uh, AMD Radeon, and then we've got our team. Um, Black Series 16 gig kit uh, with two 8 gigs in there. Um, and again, whys and wherefores in a second here. First and foremost, the case. Obviously, we're going from something super small to something fairly large in comparison. Um, this would be a mini tower over here. This is a, a mid tower, technically. Pretty big, in my, my, my opinion. But we're, we're going just to this because of airflow, mainly, honestly. The, the, the HPs had kind of, in my experience, they had kind of a uh, airflow problem the way they were designed um, so there's just not a ton of airflow in these um, and then I mean just to kind of future proof it I mean there's no reason not to have a cool system so this this is definitely gonna handle that top to bottom a uh, lot of really cool features and, and you know we'll, we'll annotate the uh, the review here uh, so you guys can see all the cool features of the, of the case itself um, but yeah I mean this is definitely a great choice um, the board here is uh, upper mid to like lower high end board um, so again future proofing uh, six score the, the you know the, the person using this is not going to be doing heavy end stuff but the great thing about that is if he decides to at some point let's say two years from now he decides to do some video editing he's not going to have to go and upgrade to do that you know if he decides to do some gaming again not going to have to upgrade to do that now the 6450 is not going to be top of the line gaming but it'll handle some basic gaming if he jumps into wow That'll handle wow, you know. So yeah, I mean the six core, the 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 you know high, higher end board, um, the graphics card. You know standalone graphics aren't necessary for browsing. Um, you know mainly mainly browsing like Netflix. You don't need it. Uh, it's nice to get that lo load off the CPU and the board. Um, so I mean just overall, it's nice to have a dedicated card. Uh, but I mean again, future proofing in case the user does decide, oh I'm gonna try out a game. It, it's not gonna hinder him to not having you know, not having an actual dedicated card. And the 16 gigs, same concept. Definitely don't need 16 gigs for browsing, uh, unless you're a, a poly tabber like myself. I have 17 tabs open in Chrome at once. And um, that's just how, you know, that's how I work. I have a lot of stuff open at the same time. And I'll be honest, my eight gigs does get taxed pretty quickly when I start going into, you know, YouTube, YouTube videos, YouTube videos, YouTube videos. It's got to render all that stuff at the same time, and the biggest thing is you need RAM to do that. I mean, that's multitasking. But even though if you're running one program, you're technically running multiple instances of that program. So that's multitasking by definition. Now, I'm sure you guys are noticing that we don't have a hard drive. We don't have an optical drive. We are actually going to re reuse the, the components from inside of this for that. Um, it did come with a 500 gig. Again, not doing anything heavy end on, on the media side of things. So. 500 is going to be plenty. I mean, that's, if you look at it, that's 500 full length HD movies and about a gig a piece. So that's a lot of space. Few people can fill that up. <laughs> I've done it several times, but that's different. <laughs> and the optical drive, uh, we've got the, you know, super multi light scribe uh, from the HP. So we're just going to port that over here and, uh, you know, we'll have a, a nice working system. 
And as always, um, you know, we, we don't really include the OS just because there's lots of options out there now. You've got your Steam OS, you've got your uh, various uh, distros of Linux, and you've got your Windows. So uh, we are going to be putting in Windows on this just because the users, you know, you're familiar with it and that's what they're using. Um, but, you know, for you guys, you've got tons of options out there. So, you know, I, I don't want to say this is going to cost you X amount of dollars and say with Windows if you want to use Steam OS. So it's going to be. You know, we always kind of keep that out just because you do have so many other options. Um, overall, this this kit right here was about five thirty uh, with tax or so, and uh, the prices, of course, are going to vary. We've got a couple of these were on sale, so I mean, we we had some good deals. So you know, you're definitely going to have different pricing, but I mean, this is a really nice case, and again, annotations. But uh, and, yeah, let's just get into the build. I think this is going to be fun. All right, guys. So the first thing I want to do, of course, is uh, we want to pull the parts that we're going to be using out of the uh, the HP here. So forgive the mess; it is a bit filthy. Thank you. I always like to have some canned air around um, for a case swap or any kind of build. Um, always keep screwdrivers around. Um, I like to use a regular, just like a regular household screwdriver for towers. Um, for laptops, I've got my kit, but I've got the kit here just in case I need something smaller. Um, and I like to keep pliers around because things like um, zip ties like to be a kind of a pain. So uh, pliers are probably the, the easiest way I know to get get some zip ties taken off. Watch out for our how to keep your computer clean video coming soon. All right, so we've got those two core components. Um, I mean, you guys have seen us talk about build, so let's just get into it. I said I wasn't going to talk a lot guys, but uh, the nice thing is this uh, motherboard comes with a um, hard drive backup utility on the on disk here, which is really cool. Just wanted to note that here. MSI, doing a real nice job. And Rosewell over here kicking kicking tail with uh, some extra zip ties and, and case screws with their C, uh, the PSU. So really, everyone's just uh, kind of showing out on this one. keep talking even though I said I wasn't going to talk much. Um, I know, I actually just thought about it, we haven't talked a lot about actual build procedures. Uh, fresh board out of the box, um, I always like to power it on before it goes in the case just because then you don't have to disassemble the whole daggone thing. Um, so yeah, you, you want to drop your, your CPU heat sink and RAM on there and then uh, see if everything spins up as it should. So yeah, I mean we're going to hook up everything out here first and then transplant in here. I always like to have my CPU and my RAM on the board when we go in because then you're not pushing the board onto the standoffs and things like that when you're putting in RAM.
I mean, oh. <laughs> sushi break. Also, camera charging break. And we're back. Obviously, I'm in different clothes and it's a different day. Um, it was a long sushi break. Uh, so we needed a four pin, or an eight pin adapter uh, to extend our eight pin 12 volt line um, to do some nice cable management up here. Um, so we went, ha went ahead and picked this up at Fry's uh, earlier today. So let's do this.
All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. We've uh, we've got everything put together. Uh, looks pretty good, if I say so myself. All the cables are managed pretty well. Most of it's tucked in the back. The extra cabling is uh, down here underneath the last uh, hard drive slot. Um, so and nothing left right now but to to get it installed and uh, get it going. All right, guys. So just cleaning up here. The uh, the unit's actually installing right now. Doing some updates. Everything works perfectly, so we can definitely call it a perfect build. Uh, everything installed properly. Um, we are using Vista, so we're having to do some digging for a couple drivers, but otherwise everything else is working pretty pretty smoothly. So definitely a successful build, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, everything's working great. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share the video, and uh, check out T3GTech.com. As always, I've been Cerebro for T3G, signing off. Well, most of the extra cables are under the bottom slot for the, the hard drive here, and then uh, all the...